everybody welcome back to my channel today we're gonna do a diy dollar tree plus to michael's dupe it's gonna be a two-tiered wire basket this one is by ashland and uh i found it on michaels.com actually on my instagram and it was originally 35 dollars, but it was on sale for 17.50 but still we're gonna make it for a lot less we're gonna use the small wire basket and a large gold basket both from the dollar tree um, and then we're gonna use four rulers this is the plus because we're actually gonna use the ones from Walmart they're a little easier as well as wood dowels from Walmart this is a multi-pack I'm gonna link all of this product in the description box down below I truly have no idea what just happened so um, there's what you missed dip, dip down I'll show you <laughs> all I did was take Waverly's uh, chalk paint and ink and I started on the inside, which would be the inside, which is like the part of the ruler that has the dip in it. And I painted it and I painted it. It dries very quickly. So I did all of the first, all of the insides. And then by the time I was done with the fourth inside, I was able to do the outside. I did the edges and the first little hole that's next to the big hole i made sure i got lots of paint in there so let's see like here i didn't do this one yet so you can see that i have no idea why the camera shut off so i apologize okay so you just want to make sure that it's nice and smooth got all of that got all the edges no holidays set it off to side then i did my first dowel this is the second biggest in the pack I don't have to keep doing that. This is the one that's 5 16ths of an inch. I didn't go all the way to the end because I know that it's gonna be short, but I don't know how short. So I did one end and then painted like that. Now I'm getting ready to do the two thin ones and the two, <laughs> I'm doing it again. The two that are 5 16ths and the two that are 3 eighths. Now the two that are three eighths, I have to do the entire stick end to end. The two that are um, that are five sixteenths, I don't have to. And all I did was, what I did for the first dowel is painted it. Didn't worry too much about the end just yet. Painted it quickly so it gets a nice coat. But it's what I like about wood and black. Painted the end. Then, make sure I get all the way around. Chalk paint dries so quickly and wood absorbs so quickly that it's literally like, you know, you can see it, but look, it doesn't come off. But here's what I did do. So paint it all the way and the end on there. Then I just took a piece of scrap material, rag or whatever, and I just went over it really quickly to get off whatever excess. It did leave some fuzzies, but that's okay. That's not the end of the world. And then I stuck it in here to dry. That's all. So again, I do apologize for missing that beginning footage. Um, I just wanted to tell you why I opted to use the rulers from Walmart. I was trying to do this with zero tools other than a scissor. Um, and the rulers from the Dollar Tree only have one hole in the top, which for a lot of projects, that's really useful. But for this project, not so much. Um, you'd have to drill the holes to hold the other dowels. So that's why we're gonna make it easier by using these ones. They are 47 cents, so you can get two for 94 cents, which is cheaper than two for a dollar. <laughs> um, and the only hole that we're not gonna use is the one that we filled in with paint, which is the second one down. But I will show you at the very end, we're gonna have a little bit of the uh, dowel left over that actually fits perfectly snugly in that hole, so that you could make a plug if you wanted to, but I don't find it objectionable, I really don't. The only thing that I would do different if I had used tools was I would round off the top to look more like the inspiration piece. Um, but otherwise, I think that it came out absolutely adorable. Um, I'm also going to use black spray paint, but you can use the black ink paint as well. Now, the one that was from Michaels was actually labeled as gray. So I think it was supposed to look like more like steel. So I've taken a little bit of these Waverly's wax chalk 
I'm sorry, <laughs> Waverly's Antique Wax. And I've gone over in a few spots because I wanted it to look like oil rubbed bronze a little bit. I just purchased a bunch of stuff from Walmart that is oil rubbed bronze. So I kind of wanted it to match that. But if you wanted to hit it with elephant gray to get the gray look that the inspiration piece had, you go right ahead. The, the brown is very, very subtle. The brown wax, it's very, very subtle. But if you wanted it to get more of a oil rubbed bronze look, you can actually take some paint like hazelnut or Waverly's chalk paint in truffle and just go over it a few spots to give it a brown look. I'm not trying to spray you, so don't try to sting me, okay? I thought I would just share with you what it's like to spray paint by my house. <laughs> I know I'm silly. I probably get a lot of probably get a lot of feedback on that little portion. Um, but anyhow, you want to take the thickest dowel, which was in the beginning of the video, and that one actually fits perfectly in the top hole. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take two of the rulers and we're gonna put the inside which is the ridge the part that has the ridge going down the middle we want to put two of them with the ridge face up on one end of the dowel and then we basically want to put the other two with the ridges in um basically towards the middle which i kind of messed up here and i had to fix it then we're going to take one of the um the middle size that we painted which is going to fit really snugly in the hole um, and we're going to uh, fit that in and sort of um, 
leave them just at their about their widest point because we're going to actually test fit with the basket. Now the reason I'm doing it this way instead of giving you exact measurements is because not everybody can find this wire basket, the big gold one. So I'm just trying to give you the idea of how you could do it if you find a different basket. Um, as long as your dowel is wide enough to accommodate the width of your basket, that's all that really matters. So I do have a second one here while that one is drying that I could use. Um, and I'm just going to adjust it. And nearly that's all you got to do. Now I did make this so it can be collapsible. Now the rulers won't fold completely into themselves, but they will fold mostly into themselves. Um, the, perm the bottom dowels are going to be permanent. The top dowel is glued to the outside ruler. Um, so it still pivots and the inside dowels will be removable. But that's completely optional. You guys could change that if you want to. Um, if you want to make this permanent and glue your sticks together, you can do that as well. But I wanted to make it so it could be adjustable so that I could change it out if I want to. I could put one of the little cutting boards on the top um, if I want to, to make like a shelf and a basket. Really, that when you make it like this, you really can do different things with it as long as your sizes of your baskets fit. So we're going to make this a, a bit of a pitch because we want it to be a little thinner at the top to accommodate the little basket a little bit more snugly. But you, again, don't really necessarily have to do that. Um, but I, that's just the design that I was going for. So what I did was I placed the bottom basket in between the two uprights and I squeezed the top uh, of the rulers together as much as I could. Um, now I want the one side on my left that I'm working on is going to be all of the the dowels will be mostly almost flush with the rulers. They're just going to leave like a little knob. The reason I did that is because I really wanted it to be secure and I thought it would be easier to cut the dowel once it's inserted, which is going to leave a little knob on the right side. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fake out some weld marks or some rivets. And we're going to do that by beating up the hot glue and then painting it when we're done. So if you have a sore weld marks, two pieces of metal welded together, it almost has that sort of like blop of glue painted over kind of situation. So um, what you're going to do is even though we pre-painted this, we're going to add the hot glue and then we're going to go back over it with paint and touch it up so it looks like a weld mark. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken the um, the two bottom uh, holes of the two rulers down on the that's sitting on the table and I made them flush with the back of the ruler almost exactly. They're sticking out a tiny, tiny bit on the other side. And now I'm adding a bead of glue around the inside of the ruler on both of the left and right uprights. Okay. And then we're really going to let it set. I almost was going to leave this in real time so you could see how long you really need to let it sit um, before you can turn over and do the rest because you really don't want it to even be the slightest bit soft because you could accidentally push the dowel out even though you do have a little glue on it. Now once the glue is set up you're going to go ahead and stand it up. What I've decided to do is with this bottom basket I, I decided to make the support go along the um, third wire which is like basically I took two solid squares and then of, of basket and then I made sure that it was even on the left and the right and that's how I determined even. <laughs> and then with the basket in place, um, I squeezed the tops in, but then I made sure I could get the basket out by tilting it up. Okay. Now we flipped it over. We're still working on that first side and we're going to add a big dot of hot glue to the ends of both of the dowels again to create that sort of rivet um, mark. Now, if you wanted to get more of or use the more oil rub bronze look, if you paint those glue dots black and then hit them with that brown, it'll look even more like a rivet or even chrome or, or you know, galvanized, some sort of gray would look cute too. Um, but what I did was I just made a really even dot and I let it really sit so it would create a nice round sort of rivet type of bolt situation. Okay. And you really have got to let it just dry. <laughs> um, you just don't want to take the, to risk actually um, moving that glue at all. All right. So once the top is dry, I have the bottom exactly where I need it to be. So I went ahead and I added the glue around the inside of the second uprights, which will actually end up being the right. If I started on the left um, with the, the left rivets, the left side, my left, then the opposite side, my right, um, we're gonna go ahead and glue on the inside of both of the legs where the dowel meets. 
And then of course, we're going to let it set up. That's really, really important. What I did do wrong, and I did, left it to tell you here, because when I go to correct it, is you want the two same sides of the um, ladder. If I'm looking at it like it's an A, you want the two right sides to either be on the inside or the outside. And you want the two left sides to either be on the inside or the outside. And the reason that is important is because you need to glue the outsides of the, um, the legs to the dowel so that it can fold. And if you glue the if you glue the opposite sides then you won't be able to pivot the dowel I, I don't know if I'm saying this right you can't basically you can't glue the the, the top cross beam to the right leg on this side and the left leg on that side um, this way it won't it won't close on you that's all and that's only if you want it to close obviously if you don't want it to close you could skip all this and just glue it there and that'll be done um but I also like that it's adjustable because, like I said before, we can change our mind. We can use this little A-frame for other things if we want to. Okay? So now I'm taking the inside of my Dollar Tree gardening shears. This is the hardest dowel to cut. But I wanted to show you that I'm just taking my time. You want to make sure you hold on to the dowel while you're doing this. Spin the dowel. Don't pull the legs don't pull the bottom uprights because you can dislodge your glue because it's pretty tough. Um, this is only in two times speed. I was actually thinking about leaving this in regular speed so you guys could see it. But it did take me a little while. And I have arthritis in my hands. I'm not as strong as I used to be. So every once in a while I turn it and then I grab it with two hands. And then I turn it and I grab it with two hands. And then I eventually broke it off. Now you can see it does have a very uneven little nub there. But we're just going to take some sandpaper and hold the dowel and just really clean it up. Now, I didn't clean it up as much as you might want to, but we're, I knew that we were going to put the big dot of glue over it to create that sort of rivet look. Um, so I just knocked it off a little bit so it wouldn't chip. Um, and then I'm going to add that glue there as well. And then we're going to let it set up. Now, I did, we'll tell you in full disclosure, you'll see here in a minute, I did not wait for that top to set up enough before I started cutting the bottom ones and it ended up coming apart on me so this is how I know you have to let it sit <laughs> okay I learn I make mistakes so you don't have to <laughs> I feel like that was from somewhere um, and again just like you go along the way you want to dry fit your basket to make sure that uh, before I cut off anything I wanted to make sure that my basket was going to fit in there the basket's also useful to help the legs um, stay apart while you're working. It gives you just a little bit more strength. But you can see there, I didn't wait for the glue to set up and the top pieces came apart when I was pulling on um, the dowel. So I stopped, gave it a second. I fast forwarded that for you guys so you didn't have to see, watch glue dry, literally. <laughs> I went back and started cutting those dowels again. Now this is the second, actually they're the, it's the second smallest dowel in the pack. Um, but still, it just took a little bit of effort. I scored around it, and then I knocked the edge off. Um, then I took that little piece that was left over, and I wrapped the, the sandpaper around it just to give myself some little bit to hold on to. And again, this to these two rivets, just like or these two dowels, just like the top one, we're going to turn into look like rivets. So you don't have to make it super flush or super smooth. You just want to knock down all of the loose pieces. And I wasn't worried about uh, if I sanded the paint because we're going to go back and touch that up when we make the rivets. So I just put a nice bead of hot glue. There is a trick to your hot glue. If you just take your glue gun and you um, swirl it around a lot over where you're gluing, you, you can tend to break your string and not have glue strings quite as much. I don't know if you guys have seen people do that and not know why. Um, but with Gorilla Glue, the strings are, it's a really stringy glue, this Gorilla Glue hot glue because I think because it's so um, strong I think that's what makes it so strong um, so then we're just make sure you let that dry it's really 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 important to let that dry okay so then we're going to cut the two middle dowels but I decided that I'm not going to fix them in place I wanted to be able to make those removable 
because I did mention to you before, in case we do use this for other things. So currently, the way I've staged it in the beginning, and you'll see again at the end, I've staged it just like a two-tier tray. But if you want to actually put something really tall on it, like condiments, maybe you could use this for your olive oil bottles, or whatever you have that you want to put that's tall, you can take the dowels and the basket off of the top. I made the ba those dowels a little longer so they hang off about a half of an inch on each side. Um, so what you want to do is you just want to measure. That's how I'm measuring it. And then I'm cutting. Um, and because I'm not creating rivets on those, I made sure that I painted the end black and sanded the end black. Now, one of them I did make longer because remember, two of the rulers are on the outside and two of them are on the inside. So I wanted them to hang off and look uniform so they were both hanging off the same amount. So I just went ahead and I measured um, so they're each hanging off about a half an inch on each side. Um, and you want to do like the half an inch because you want to give it enough slack that if somebody bumps into it, it won't accidentally knock one of the dowels over. Um, but I will tell you that when you put weight in that top basket, it does help keep the dowels in place. You have to hit it pretty hard to knock one of the dowels out. Okay. Now I'm just going back with some more ink and I'm dabbing it on. Um, hot glue will take chalk paint really well. If you dab it, if you try to rub it, sometimes it'll just rub right off again. Um, so I've just gone all the inside and outside rivets um, on the top and the bottom as well. Okay, and then just touch up any place I might have sanded or the basket would have scraped it. Uh, there's a couple of spots when I was trying to dry fit the basket that it scraped it off. Okay, and really, I know it's going to sound crazy, but that's it. Like I said, if I had was using tools, I would have liked to round it off the top of the rulers. Um, not necessarily with a jigsaw, but maybe with like a belt sander. I would have liked to have really rounded the tops off like the inspiration piece. so They look a little less like rulers. But, you know, I see them as rulers because I saw them as rulers and I saw rulers when I saw it. So that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Hopefully you guys understood what I was trying to say. <laughs> so now we're just going to dry fit these dowels and then we'll put their baskets in place. Um, now, uh, as I was mentioning before, the baskets, the basket placement um, is adjustable. So I've just made it in my mind to say that the second space... Um, on both ends is where I'm going to let my dowel go across so it's even um, and then you can adjust it accordingly all right now for future reference don't put your first your second your top layer of dowels in your your removable dowels don't put them in before you put your bottom basket in because you have to like tilt it down remember I said you have to like turn it in and lay it down flat so it fits nice and slug snug not slug um, yeah so that's it so I will show you that these dowels fit perfectly in here. So if you wanted to take the time to cut down and fill in those holes, you absolutely can. Make plugs like when you get furniture. And that's it, everybody. Here's how it looks completely empty. I love it. It's so easy. It was so simple. I'm so glad we used these rulers. Here it is with fruit in it. I don't know why, just because you could. Um, and those are giant apples, but you see bananas. And here it is set up for coffee and tea. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. If you do, give this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to share this video with friends and family. Anybody you know might be interested in making this. And if you uh, haven't yet, click subscribe. When you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And as always, you guys take care. God bless. We'll see you next time. Bye.